What is going on, everybody? JPA Trades here. Uh, going to be going over a kind of an introduction to support and resistance levels. Some of you guys might have known this already, but if you're uh, kind of new to charting, new to stock trading, this will be a pretty useful video. And just want to say before we get started, thanks for all the uh, recent love and support, liking all the videos. It really, really goes a long way. So if you like what you see here, uh, maybe leave a like down below. I'd appreciate it a lot. So with that, let's get right into it. So what we're looking at here is just the Meta's stock chart. So you see kind of looks kind of clear. I have a 90 minute time frame on just so we get some less candles. But if you put it kind of to one minute, you kind of really see that there's, tell there's just a lot going on here. It looks kind of jumbled up. So when I go to make my support and resistance lines, what I kind of, what I like to look for is longer duration so maybe you could use like 90 minutes an hour I don't really like two and four hours the daily the weekly the monthly so for day trading during the week we'll take a look at the 90 minute candle and meta respected this pretty much all last few weeks and it's a really easy one to view and diagram so I think it's one of the ones I'm gonna get it to practice for you guys and I'll go into some other ones later in the video but right here if you line it up, you can kind of see all of these wicks repeating. So what you can do is you can just take a little line and plot it across. And this is Trend Spider. It's one of the newer uh, softwares I've been using and testing out. I actually really like it a lot. So I'll link it in the description if you guys are interested in it. So right here, you can kind of line up where all these resistance level happens. So 72.7, there's some action. Seems like down again here some action 72.3 72.72 so pretty much you can go ahead and say probably about 72.5 it looks all right so you start seeing like okay goes up retraces goes up retraces goes way down but then goes way up it gets pretty close to that 72.5 there's our high 71.7 retraces again so if you're looking to buy stuff say hey if it gets over this level I'll buy the calls if it holds it I'll buy puts you can say okay right around 172 that's where I want to start considering buying puts I want to start looking into hey what can I do here what should I be thinking of what's my measured move down gonna be what's kind of the repeating pattern so it works down works up works down works up and then same thing when you go to decide your supports kind of go do the same thing I just like to do it line it up so I have the same pattern and just kind of look for where do these candles start to line up so just so happens about 160 a little under you start to get some support and it's not quite as strong as the psychological level and I've talked about psychological level sometimes on Twitter that's kind of just those nice round numbers that everyone likes everyone loves buying like AMD AMD it's really hard to get through that 100 level it's really hard to get under that 100 level but when they break they usually move pretty big so when AMD broke 100 the last time it really really sold off big and you're seeing that now so it's trying to make its way back up I think got to about 80 today another psychological level then fell under so no surprise there to see one at 160 and then way down here see 154.6 and then you move up there's that other kind of repeaters there's another repeater there about 155 so I also really, really like these deep wick down because it says someone's sitting there looking to buy it. So I'll get into that. There's another couple stock charts that make that pattern a little bit nicer. And I'll tell you what I'm looking at. But let's just say for this one, we'll say here's all of our support and resistance points. So what you're looking for when you're playing these, the more times it's tested, the, light, the weaker that level gets. So first time it gets repeated you saw the bigger sell off here second time it got repeated you see a bigger sell off here third time it got repeated I guess technically eh, we'll say a third there's some little bit of repeater action in there but not quite as intensive a sell off so what this is telling me is next time through here it's more likely that it's gonna start running up to these higher gaps so it could run up to there and essentially gap downs and gaps up. Those are just those big candlesticks all in one move down overnight or in the morning 
or just straight shots. So all of these could be really, really quick climbs. But that's a that's a story for another day. What we're focused on is here. And same with the dip down is the fewer times it's tested, the stronger it is. So really, this 155 only got tested what a couple times in a couple hours, 90 minute candles. Tested again and just shot right up, as opposed to this 160 level. Tested, 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 tested again under, and then you have to reclaim it so the support turns into resistance when it falls under. So it has to do that reclaim back over, and then when it reclaims again, shoots back up, gets to our other big resistance level, and goes down. So remember the big thing that I think is most useful is use a long enough time frame that you can really get an idea of what's going on. If you use like a one minute chart, you're gonna you're gonna really muddy up what you're looking at. You're gonna be like, oh there's resistance here. Like I will just draw them all across real quick just to see where you can start connecting lines. It's like, oh I see some resistance here. I see some resistance here. Oh well I kinda see some repeaters here. Kind of see some tops that happen here. Oh, I see some tops that happen here. I see some bottoms that happen here. Bottoms that happen, and you really end up with this really messy vision. And you don't, you might, you'll start splitting your hairs. You'll start just kind of going crazy because there's so much to look at. And you really want to make it as simple as you can. You want to be able to make quick decisions. You want to be able to make non laborious decisions you're only going to have a few moments to react when these levels hit you want to be confident in what you're looking at you want to be confident in what you're doing so now i'm going to kind of go into what i'm talking about when i see when i say like those big wicks so we'll look at spy and we'll look at gamestop because it was also had a pretty good example and gamestop is funny and i like to put little jokes in what i do so here's where we see a big wick and spy for no real reason and then this gap up here so all these other resistance points there's pretty many here but the wicks are interesting because they're saying someone believes in something that usually that's a big institution or a big somebody will sitting on these levels and if it ever goes down here I'm gonna buy it so when they happen they're worth paying attention to so here's that one wild wick down went down to 372 so it says oh that's interesting I should probably keep an eye on that so it hits that three where's it go 372 again 372.9 372.56 wicks down again and then just rocket straight up so you have this wick up here where someone's selling so that means there's a seller sitting on one of these levels that if it ever gets there they're gonna start dumping a lot of shares but if you exhaust that seller the seller gets exhausted it'll just start to fly up afterwards. So same thing, if that seller is still sitting here, that's why I'd make the joke, pick out your bike down here, because this thing's likely to shoot straight back down. As fast as it went up, that's as fast as it'll go down. And same thing, if it gets through this seller, likely you'll get that gap up from that previous overnight fall. So you kind of want to also pay attention to those super long wicks, like here's that long wick again. I can drag it out further so you can see it too right about that 372 is where another crazy wick happened so when these super long wicks happen they're worth paying attention to they're kind of like these interesting points they're equally as interesting as powerful it's not as consistent as meta where it hits and repeats that all the time you kind of have that think of it as like someone punching up trying to punch through a wall and every punch it's one one layer down and every time you fall down onto it it's like you're falling onto the ice and every time you keep falling on the ice you're more likely to fall underneath the water so keep these big wicks in mind and then for GameStop had a little bit of a similar fashion where these crazy wicks up happen and they keep showing up so here's this massive just great green candle all the way up it makes that big high the last buyer runs out at 148.6 so where does that wick happen again so that wick happens again 148.37 148.46 nine cents apart so where the sellers ran out the first time that's where someone else either took a short or sold 
So I say head you short you here. So they're going to go up to where that last buyer got tired. I'd say they're probably not going to get above here again and look for that sell off. Same thing with these wicks down. This is where people just, the, either the institution, the, the individual investors, whoever, sitting down. These aren't these crazy wicks downs. These are kind of repeated resistance points. So dip down. So you're pretty close the first time. You're a little bit higher. 115.2 ish. 114.31, 113.2. So kind of that 115, 113 range have been pretty good bases that all led up to spikes. And then if you get way over, so you see that there's not really much above for a long time. These are month, these are what all the way back to just drag away all the way back to April almost. So that's why I say things can get a little wacky because there's really not much else there. And then you have another wick again all the way out here in March. So once we get past that 153.5 wick, that's why I say things can get squeezy. There's They need to reestablish the support and the resistance levels because there's just not an, the time that's passed. This is over, what, three months almost. There's been no new resistance points that happened after that gap up. So that's something you got to keep in mind. You kind of always want to have the time frame that you want. Longer time, the better and always keep track of what these wicks are doing. Wicks are telling you stories. Wicks are saying, hey, someone's buying, someone's selling. Why is this their spot? So generally, these are people with much more money than you and I. So either they have information we don't have access to, they have tools that we might not have access to, but what we can do is at least go back and read the story of what happened. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't mind leaving me a like, it'd be greatly appreciated. And if you're interested in Trend Spider and want to try it out, I'll put a discount code down in the description. And with that, I hope you have a great weekend.